We stopped in the last part on number 10, general poverty and major effective reactions. Now what does that mean? In a nutshell, it's simply saying a person doesn't have a conscience. A person isn't able to feel emotions of empathy for other people. On the surface, it may seem like Fred Phelps doesn't do that, but he does have some emotion. Hate is an emotion, after all. Hervey Cleckley, in his book, addressed the example of Hitler. He answered that Hitler was not a psychopath, because that's not what he's referring to. Hitler also had a shoot-yourself-in-the-foot type of way of operating, ultimately. He was certainly successful in his evil ways for a long time, but if you read about his last days in his campaigns, there was some almost suicidal aspects to it, at least suicidal in the sense of trying to get preserved for posterity and to be victorious. Specific loss of insight. That means a person is unable to reflect on their behavior, unable to be introspective, to question themselves, to say, okay, is this right for me to do? Am I doing this correctly? It's a very high level quality to be introspective. A lot of people don't have that developed as fully as it could, but it's completely absent in psychopaths. Fred Phelps' son says, no, he can't do that. And I don't see him being introspective either, all the stuff I looked at. Twelve is unresponsiveness in general interpersonal relations. Now, he obviously has terrible personal relations. I don't know if we go to the level of a psychopath. Fantastic and uninviting behavior with drink and sometimes without. Certainly, he is fantastic and uninviting behavior. Fourteen is suicide threats rarely carried out. In the book Addicted Hate, it said he tried to commit suicide once, but other than that, there's no evidence. Sex life impersonal, trivial, and poorly integrated. He succeeded in the sense of having children, so in a sense he has a sex life that's normal. 16. Failure to follow any life plan. According to Cleckley, psychopaths are very erratic in their behavior. Later researchers, such as Robert Harris, seem to suggest they can be very ruthless in pursuit of whatever goals they deem worthy. Fred Phelps does follow a life plan. He's a minister. He's stuck to that. So he's not a psychopath in that sense. In his essence, a psychopath is very smooth and they have no emotion, no conscience. Fred Phelps doesn't fit that 